This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And we have another exciting conversation. You wanted to talk about co-creating. Yes, yes. So you just had a, you just had a big, fabulous family event, and it, was, it went beyond expectations. Yeah. And so that's, that, that's the anchor of this, right? Yes, yes. Um, I know sometimes I, I have wanted to, to correct people, I I don't, but I wanted to correct them because <laughs> particularly in the traditional church, they'll have chairpersons and vice chairs, or they'll have co-chairs, and they always treat the co-chair as a vice. That's different. Mm-hmm. A vice is second in command or whatever, steps in if something happens with the chair. But then they'll say co-chair and treat the co-chair like a vice. Mm -hmm. And that used to just make me nuts for years. (laughs) Just nuts. (laughs) So you got um, however many committees or whatever you have times 30 years all doing the same thing. It's it was bad. So when you talk about co-creators, I always can make that distinction. We are not the chair, and God is the vice. (laughs) Now that's where you're going with that. Okay, that is correct. Yes. That is correct. And and yeah, as you were describing before we we started the the episode, um, that your daughter put together this fabulous event, and it came out better than she had planned. I mean, Mm -hmm. she put a lot of thought and a lot of planning and a lot of preparation into it, and then it was uh, over the top. And, I, yeah. 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 Way over the top. And <laughs> that that's wonderful. And as a recovering control freak, you know what it would be like to try and orchestrate all of the, the details of how that event is going to go together. And when we're creating an event, and we've all done it, you know, we make the plans and we buy the stuff and we get the things, we put the schedule together and we figure out in great detail exactly how mm-hmm. it's going to go together. Uh, people who prep weddings do that a lot because there's a lot of moving parts and it's possible for a wedding and a reception to come completely off the rails if the preparation isn't done adequately. On the other hand, what your daughter did was she created not the event, but the space for the event, Mm -hmm. the room for the event to happen. And she put the flavor and the tone and the texture together for the event and then let the event be created in that space. Yes. I'm not sure if she did that intentionally, though, you know, because, okay, so her mom is a recovering control freak. (laughs) And (laughs) she took the baton, did she? She's not yet in recovery. (laughs) 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 But it was, she flows so wonderfully. I don't know that I flowed so well. She she does flow in and out of. So it was it was almost like when something was happening that wasn't planned, she could just ease right in and allow it to happen. Mm-hmm. It, it was just really amazing to be in that experience, having fun, but also watching how I call spirit just moving through and uh, making adjustments. You know, even in, even in conversation. Yeah. There. You know, we we had all been together. I mean, my daughter is 36. 
So obviously we've been together <laughs> for 36 years, mm-hmm. but yeah, for a while. My daughter by a mother mo- another mother has o- has been in my life. She's 39 and she's been in my life since she was 13. And then subsequently married one of my sons, but anyway, um there were sensitive times things that have happened along in the years and we didn't, you know, we just love each other, but we, some things we didn't talk about Mm. because, you know, I'm the mom and the son (laughs) is the offender. And, you know, how do we really, (laughs) you know, and so we're you're not just mom, you're mom, the pastor. um, Yeah. So how do you, you, it's just, don't talk about this. Let's just us be girls and sisters and whatever. (laughs) But in this, this particular time, I mean, some things came out and it was like, I wish I had known. Well, it really didn't matter that I didn't know because we always treated each other like nothing happened. But it's <laughs> but it's interesting <laughs> that we all knew something happened, a whole lot of something happened, but we still treated each other the way we wanted to. It's beautiful. You know? Yeah. But that was... Here, here's the other God part, you know, they, where I saw God as being the partner or the driver of the whole thing, not just co, but like suddenly we were in the back seat, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, she could have, my daughter by another mother, could have upset the whole family dynamic. She had the power to do that. Mm-hmm on so many levels in terms of who gets to see the children and how the children are going to feel about their father and just every way you could think of it. And she never did. Like she was, she was a, she's an unbelievable person. And I know that there was hurt involved, but you would, you know it, but it never showed, you know, he, even in family events, when my son would show up, Everybody embraced him like he just, you know, he just arrived a little late. <laughs> it's no mm. big deal. <laughs> but she could have stopped that and, mm. and you know, made things very uncomfortable. And she didn't. And I kept, I've always looked at her through the years like, what kind of woman are you? But. Now, I have just a personal question. Did yes. she do that because it was, she, she made a conscious decision that I could act this way or I could act that way and I want to act this way? Or was it the, the, she's acting the way, the only way that, that ever occurred to her? One time we were at the mall and my son's new girlfriend was there. He wasn't. So we were all there, <laughs> <laughs> which is a whole other story. Okay. And, and, and my, my, uh, daughter by another mother, we were walking together and I said, you know that you could you control this whole thing. You you do know that, don't you? And she said, I do. Okay. And that was it. And okay. and she just I just think she's a genuinely sweet person. And it seems like confronted with the with the difficulty, she just chose to be better, to take the high road. I, yeah. I, that's my take on it. Well, and that's, you know, the difference between power and force, you know, the warrior stands there with his sword and by being able to get that harmonious outcome that he's or she is looking for without taking the sword out of the sheath, that's power. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to start rattling the saber and making threats, then the, the power goes away and it just becomes a, a you know, a, trying to have a display of force. And she realized that she had the power and left the sword in the sheath. Many times. Yeah. And, and I've, you know, I so appreciate her because I've wondered or hoped that I could be the same. Hmm. You know, I've, I've never, I can't think of a situation I don't know. Maybe it's personality. I mean, I don't get ruffled about a whole lot, but <laughs> <laughs> but that was extreme, and I just admire her for that. It's beautiful. 
And, and a reminder for everybody that whatever search or circumstance or situation we're in, by remembering that we're involved in a co-creative process, it's not us pushing all of the pieces around, it is mm-hmm. us participating in a much bigger picture and letting go a little bit and allowing the pieces to come together in a way that we're not forcing them. We can stand in the flow of that infinite power and co-create something that quite frankly, goes way beyond what we could do for ourselves. Yeah, I kind of, as you were speaking, I was thinking I really enjoy hearing you speak about that because it's not, it's beyond what you can orchestrate. You know, I mean, you can make a decision and sometimes I'll say, well, I'm taking the high road. But I can't really even take credit for that because... I just don't get all ruffled anyway, because, you know, I mean, I'm the person that will look back on something and say, you know, I should have told him this and this. <laughs> oh, how did I let that? And then I'll, you know, then I'll think, well, you know, I don't want to be seen in that light. But it's really, I credit it to spirit keeping me being what I want to be. Even times when I don't, I probably might not or would prefer not to be. I never feel like I'm in this by myself and I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. And there's the, uh, I, I could have said this, or why didn't I say that? Yeah. And, you know, and we're aware of something that we think in hindsight might have been very helpful in the circumstances. And we also don't know if we'd said it, if the person we were saying it to would have heard it, if they would have understood it if they would have accepted it or if it's directions, if they would have done it. So there are so many levels of, it doesn't matter. (laughs) 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 You can take your pick. I was sitting here listening to you describe all of these hypothetically, hypothetical, nice situations. Most of the time when I look back, it's not like, I wonder if they would have listened. It's like, God, I'm glad I didn't say that. I could have. (laughs) (laughs) But it's a good thing I wasn't thinking at that time, you know? So you're very gracious. Oh, as a um, recovering um, morning radio shock jock, because that's what I did when I first moved to Philadelphia in the 80s, is I was on radio morning shows, and my job was to participate in making fun of people and ridiculing and undermining things. It was great fun. Um, <clears throat> and it was fun at that time to be really quick. You know, so something would come up, somebody would say something, and I would come up with a little bar retort that I could make. And I was very good at it. And it was fun. Uh, along the path of my spiritual education, unfoldment, mm-hmm. enhancement, whatever it you want to call it. Um, I realized that that the energy of that was not particularly good for me or the people who I was doing it to. And I was real concerned that, oh, well, maybe if I get myself emotionally and spiritually healthy, I'm not going to be funny anymore. And it turns out that I just am funny about different things. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I've noticed in the privacy of my own mind is that sometimes I still come up with the barbs. (laughs) (laughs) They just don't come out. (laughs) <laughs> I just don't say them. It's like, oh, well, I'm not going not to mention that. And, and I know exactly what's going on because it's a very familiar process. But what, what has changed in me is I'm no longer willing to say that. And I also understand, yes, if I said that, then I could get an outraged reaction, probably a laugh, um, you know, maybe change the conversation into a different direction. And then I get to watch what happens when I don't do that. And every once in a while, somebody says what I thought of to say (laughs) without me saying it. And then I can watch it, you know, the reaction happen to them. But understanding what we're bringing and that if something needs to be said, maybe we're the ones to say it. And maybe by not saying it, we leave the space for somebody else to say it or for somebody to figure it out without it ever having been said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I thinking of what you said about a couple of sentences ago that you can say it and you don't know whether the person's going to hear it 
you know, the advice given and so forth. And and that's have that has helped me be quiet a lot more. <laughs> really? I mean, I talk so much less than I used to that it surprises me. Because if you're given this advice that you know is gold, you know it's gold. <laughs> It's not like maybe if, but, you know, you've done it like 50 million times and it never fails, right? The fact mm-hmm. that it might fail this time is just not happening. Right. And I, I would share that. And I've seen people just like it rolls off. And I'm thinking, what, are you crazy? And mm-hmm. I thought, you know what? Just don't say it. Just leave it alone. Oh, yeah. I find myself in a situation where I recognize the circumstance. And I think to myself, I've seen this movie before and I know how it comes out. Mm, and sometimes like the person who's involved in, 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 in who's doing their scene, they don't want to hear about how it's going to end. They're just so convinced that what they're doing is is art that they they got to they got to keep at it. It's like, OK, I'm just going to use up extra words and annoy somebody. So I'll just watch the movie. Where's my popcorn? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess that's that. I guess that's where it is. I <laughs> just look and just say, okay, you know, there's there's only one end to this, but fine. Maybe there's another, another, but I highly doubt it. Well, maybe there's a surprise. Maybe the sequel doesn't end the same way. Let's take a break and then continue our conversation about co-creating. It's Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand. That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All of the information is at bethelight.com. That's b-the-light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at bethelight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with the Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're having a conversation about co-creating and how important it is to understand that we are involved in a co-creative process. And it's not, and you were talking before about uh, co and vice. So it's not like we're the creator and God is the vice creator. Mm -hmm. And in some religions, there's a insistence that God is the creator and that we're vice or we're just pawns playing along. And it's really important to understand that it is a co-creative process. And that's kind of the essence of the new thought teaching is that there is one, one creative power, one presence, one love, one source, one, whatever you want to call it. There's, you trace it all the way back to the beginning. There was just one, whether it's scriptural or scientific, there was one singularity or in the darkness and void, there was God. And everything that exists came from the one. So the whole creative process that created everything that we experience created us. And we are using that same power, that same principle to create what's new for us next. So when we say co-creative, it's not like we're going to, oh, we're going to call God up and say, hey, we need to go to work here. It's like, it's always working. (laughs) It's working when we're paying attention and it's working when we're not. So I'm thinking while you're saying that of, of the experience that I just had, if you take uh, a vice position, then the experience isn't as rich as it could be. Although, although it's still the one, I think it's like the one doesn't have um, free flow. Like there's, it could be damned up if you mm-hmm. don't, you know, 
give your whole self to it. And there's, there's this thing about being humble, and, uh, and I think it's like poorly defined, but just holding back for whatever reason, you know, you don't want to get in God's way if that's the way you look at it. But for something to be as full and rich and 100%, you got to bring your 100% to it. I think knowing also that if I bring my 100% now, I might, some of it might get vetoed, but (laughs) 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 I, I don't know. It just seems like you just have to understand that opening yourself 100% and giving your all is allowing God to be all God can be yeah. in in the situation. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. There's a actually a wonderful saying that the Quakers, the friends, have, which is very simple, uh, and it applies universally, which is pray and move your feet. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you want something to happen, then the prayer is absolutely the way to start. Because that is the that's the way that we are partnering with that co-creative power. We're not getting ego based and thinking, well, I'm just gonna move all this stuff around myself. But to think I can do the prayer, I can set the intention, I can be open to this wonderful new possibility, and then I don't have to do anything else. I'm just I'm gonna order something from God's room service and it's gonna show up. No, there might be something for me to do. I have to be willing to actually get engaged and involved and co-create. Because if there's need of some hands or a mouth. Uh, or a credit card <laughs> in order to make God's next great idea for me happen, then if it's mine, I, you know, it's time for me to, to, to take some action, but not before I do the prayer. Hmm. Mm, okay. Yeah. And likewise, uh, if you don't do your part, and and I've seen this over and over, and and I'm sure you have, if you don't do your part and it doesn't work out the way you want, now people make excuses about why didn't God didn't want it that way or whatever. And I'm like, how can you even have an opinion that like that when you haven't done a hundred percent of what you can do? I sometimes do spiritual counseling uh, work, and in a session, somebody might say to me, "Well, I want a." a new job or I want a new relationship. And the the way to get the new job or the new relationship or whatever it is that we're looking for, it works for pretty much everything, is and we'll do it for with, with a relationship. It's like, oh well I've been, you know, on dating websites and I've been looking for somebody and nothing's happening for me and I can't find the right person. And I turn it around, okay, once the right person shows up, what kind of things are you going to do together? You know, where are you going to want to hang out? What are the things that you want to, you know, because people say, oh, well, I'm going to go to on, on dating websites to see if I can find somebody and then I'm going to go to a bar or a concert or whatever. Well, who, the people you find at bars are people who hang out at bars. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if that's what you want to do once you've found your person, then go to the bar. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to go to the dating website, what happens next? You want to, I had a friend of mine years ago said that he just, wanted to, you know, have a relationship and like just go into center city, Philadelphia and get on the, the, the flash bus and just ride around from stop to stop and do some sightseeing. And I said, great. Have you ever done that? He says, no. Then why not? I said, I don't have anybody to do it with. I said, well, go do it because then you'll become the sort of person who, who enjoys doing that. And you'll either meet somebody on the flash bus the first time you do it, or somebody else who likes that same sort of thing will show up because you're putting that energy out and you're participating and you're being the person who you want to be once you have what you want to have. Yeah. yeah. And very shortly he was married. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that, that's, so, that's wonderful because those are little details that are important. But you never hear people talk about it like that. Yeah. The same thing when somebody's looking for a job. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I've applied for this job. And I don't know if I'm going to get it. It's like, you're not going to get a job. There's, there's a hiring manager who's looking for somebody who has the skill set to accomplish something for them, for which they will gladly pay. They've got budget. Mm-hmm. They've got more money than time is what they've got. <laughs> they need some of your time. So... If you take it from, I hope they give me the job, to 
this is the skill set that I'm offering up and I'm, I'm willing to do it and it's going to cost because it's valuable and somebody's going to get it for less than it's worth because I'm willing to strike a, a wonderful war bargain. And then the yeses happen mm -hmm. because it changes the intention. What am I bringing to it rather than what am I getting from it? Yeah. Whole different way of approaching something. And you could use that example in, in so many different ways. Yeah, it works in all of them. Yeah. It's, it's not asking permission and hoping. It's in a way just saying, and it's not overconfident or being cocky. It's, this is this is who I am. This is what I do. You know, mm -hmm. and I do it with excellence, which reminds me of something I just said to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if somebody wants to be an actor, then act. And it's not like you have to, to get into a Hollywood blockbuster movie on your first acting gig, mm -hmm. but act, you know, maybe you can take a class, um, you know, with other actors and hang around with people who are acting and get yourself some practice and find some students who are, have an assignment to make a student film. So they need actors because student filmmakers are horrible actors. They actually need to find people with talent, but practice the craft. Do what you say you want to do. Act like you will act when you are successful in this and start opening a door. That is the co-creative process. Be that light that you wish to see. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I just thought about something that recently happened. I, um, I go on Facebook maybe twice a week to update posts and do whatever and see if I got any notes. And I, I looked... I'm not good with Messenger and all of those because they keep changing. So <laughs> I, 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 they got chat and all that. I don't know what the heck to do with those. But they, I saw the red button that said Messenger. I said, okay, I know what that is. And there was a message from somebody that totally floored me before I even read it. I'm thinking, you're messaging me? <laughs> <laughs> you are messaging me? How did you... And and so I thought, okay, just see what the person wants. And I thought, how did you get to me? But then it occurred to me that I had been in a circle a few times, not a lot, a few times, and said a few things, which happened, the person happened to remember. There was no hmm. intent there. They just remembered. And I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. And so if it got this far, let's just flow, see what happens. You know, if not, hey, it was like really nice to see the message. Okay. Yeah. Did it lead anywhere? Too soon to tell. Okay. Well, the, the magic of social media. Either something will happen or not. Yeah. But just like, you, you know what? I'm so cool about this. I don't even know what could happen. It's like, it, it could go a couple of different ways and either way is cool with me. Perfect. Either way. Perfect. I love that. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take another break and then a prayer on co-creating. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy to understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b the light Com. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. I'm having a was, fun conversation. I was listening to your um, the sort of commercial, I guess, and yeah. uh, for God calls, and I love this line: "Magic is loose in the world." That's that's just plucked so from, plucked from one of the God calls, and our, I think it was. Uh, uh, Arthur C. Clarke said, uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And we have this process of doing prayer and we create things that we have no idea how we would be able to create them. And that actually ties together with what we're talking about. And that's magic. How does that yeah. work? I don't know. I don't know how that works. I empirically can explain how to do it, but I don't know how it works. I have some ideas, but I don't know how it works. Hmm. I don't think we're supposed to. Well, yeah, yeah. because yeah, it just it just works. And so you Amen. know, you know, I'm a digger, right? I'm gonna try to re- after a while. I just got tired. Like, listen, it just works. I'm just gonna go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the metaphor that I just came up with is that it is very unlikely that the ball in the pinball machine understands how to play pinball. <laughs> <laughs> that's too good <laughs> that is just too good <laughs> I, well, gotta, I gotta use that one around. You're that welcome. One. I'm just you know imagining ricocheting all over the place getting spun from this to that with the boingers and the bangers and the paddles and all the rest of it I don't know what's going on I'm, but it's quite a ride meantime there's from a different vantage point, there's a different game going on than the crashing and bumping that I'm doing. <laughs> Listen, but it must be okay because they keep doing it. <laughs> keep. I guess. I guess. Yeah. No judgment about it. Oh, I mean, the ball can say they keep on doing this. So I guess it's all right. <clears throat> yep. Yep. They're very heavy and very solid. Hmm. The ball in a pinball machine does not break very often. Other parts break, but not the ball. Hmm. Okay. So let us do a prayer on co-creating, which is the fundamental concept that we have, that we are creating our own lives according to our beliefs. And we're doing that by partnering with that one creative power that creates everything. There is a divine presence. There is a love, a source, a creator that by sharing itself has brought everything that exists now into existence by a process of unfolding and evolution and growth. We know th- we've been watching the process for our entire lives and see how things change and grow and get more complicated and maybe get simplified. And that same process has been going since the beginning of time. In the beginning, there's just that one, that one presence, that one power, that one love, that one intelligence, that one energy with the urge and the intention to create. So everything that exists is that one shared in its own way. That divine power and presence, that intelligence, that love, that energy is forming and shaping itself into everything that exists everywhere. All of the planets, all of the people, all of the particles are that one expressed in a unique and specific way. And since I know that's true, I know that each one within the sound of my voice is part of that divine power and presence. We are all that divine essence showing up in our own way. And I know that that intelligence that abides within is that infinite intelligence expressed and personalized and particularized as each of us. We have the ability to think. And that same creative power that created everything abides within. And whenever we create anything, we are using that same creative power to create it by setting an intention, by establishing an idea firmly in mind, believing in it, having faith in it, and the willingness to take action on behalf of it, we are activating that creative power, that divine law, that one that creates everything. We are co-creating with the infinite. It has created everything, including each of us, and we are creating our next experience in partnership with it. So I know that each one is divinely guided to that perfect understanding of the experience that we are choosing 
the next experience that we are inviting into life and that we are guided in exactly the perfect steps that are ours to take. We are similarly guided in the steps that are ours to release. If there's something that we don't need to be paying attention to, that we don't need to be distracted by, we are guided to let go of it and take those next perfect steps and participate and co-create and be a partner in bringing that newness into life. And good and more good and more good unfolds for each of us in our own way. It's different for everybody, but the same process for all. The good is unfolding now. And I'm grateful for it. And with a deep feeling of thanks for all the good that's already underway, for the willingness that each one has to participate in this co-creative process, and for the awareness of the law, which is already saying yes. With gratitude for all of this, I speak this word and I release it into that creative law, knowing full well that the law is already responding. The good is already underway. So I let it be. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Rev. Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Rev. Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.